Please welcome Chief of Space Operations, United States Space Force, General John J. Raymond. Good afternoon. It's, a, it's great to be back on the central coast of California. Representative Carvajal, Senator Padilla, Representative Liu, Deputy Secretary of Defense Hicks, and Vice President Harris, thank you for joining us at Vandenberg Space Force Base on this historic day. The United States is the world leader in space, and Vandenberg has long played a critical role. The first polar orbiting satellite was launched here in 1958. The first GPS satellite was launched here in 1978. The world's first commercial spaceport started operations here in 1996. Space operations training and education for the United States Space Force begins here at Vandenberg Space Force Base. And Vandenberg is the home for our command and control hub, ensuring all joint and coalition warfighters have the space capabilities they need to accomplish their missions. Today, space is essential to the daily lives of every American and billions of people around the world. Space power enhances every instrument of our national power and underwrites the design of our joint force. However, the distinct advantage America derives from space has not gone unnoticed by our competitors and adversaries. Legacy space systems that long guaranteed security and prosperity are vulnerable. The creation of the Space Force embodies our nation's commitment to sustain our security and leadership in space. This year's President's budget request prioritizes space and enables a bold transformation to deliver resilient space capabilities to deter attack and ensure our advantage. We are doing this with our partners across the intelligence community, commercial industry, and with our allies and partners. Space has always been synonymous with the future. The guardians you see here today come to work with a singular focus on ensuring the future is bright, both here on Earth and in the heavens above. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for your leadership, for your support to guardians and their families, and for joining us here at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Thank you very much. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the 49th and current Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. In December, I convened the first National Space Council meeting under our administration. As the chair of the council, I made this issue a point of emphasis. I believe without clear norms, we face unnecessary risks in space. The United States will continue to be a leader in order to establish, to advance, and demonstrate norms for the responsible and peaceful use of outer space, the threats we face in space. This is why our administration has proposed the largest single increase in our military space capability in our nation's history. And we will continue to invest so you are able to protect our interest in space, which in turn protects our interests here on Earth. One example is the Artemis Accords, a set of principles that will guide civil use of space. They are designed to create a safe and transparent environment for space exploration, science, and commercial activities. Since our administration took office, we have doubled to 18 the number of nations to sign on. In recent months, you have heard the President and me talk a lot about defending international norms and rules. Rules and norms are shared principles that guide the behavior of people and of communities. They are common understandings of what is right, what is wrong, 
and what is acceptable. Whether it is the way we interact with our colleagues at work or the way nations interact with each other on the world stage, rules and norms provide us all with a sense of order and stability to establish new rules and norms for the new challenges of the 21st century. Areas like emerging technologies, cybersecurity, and of course, space. 